Hello, welcome back. Today we're gonna make the zero pressure regulator for the gas supply. I wanna do this because I've seen that the fluctuations in the load, that it's not keeping up with the suction pressure, let's say. This thing needs to be altered whenever it to react correctly and that means that, that the pressure drops are not the same at all loads which is pretty normal for a, for a pipe this long goes to another mister laminator and a barrel with straw and another mister laminator and then the electric precipitator because of this barrel by the way the electric precipitator lives pretty long for about less time I had three hours of runtime and still it was pretty clean and there is no deposit whatsoever and maybe I can shine inside maybe you can see it I will alter the valve if you see the shiny thing that's the, the gate valve it's perfectly clean so no shit is going into the engine anymore first it was the case although it was not a not a lot of tar it was mostly water but some tar of course that was the case because the uh, electrostatic precipitator gets less efficient if there is a lot of water mist in there because it shorts out some things and then the electrostatic field won't work as good anymore but as i've shown with the charcoal filter <laughs> that one blew up <laughs> literally blew up on me because it was leaking and stuff so at some point <laughs> it sucks in air and it goes through the electrostatic precipitator when the air of course it's properly mixed with some it was a quite a rich because it doesn't explode that much it was quite a rich rich ra ratio but still the thing shorted out because of all the whoa, 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 water that gets get through sometimes that they, they will do that normally it's not of nothing of a problem if you don't have any leaks but if you have it might be uh, a problem but in the end this one was okay but with this fuel now and this Yes, the fire is sometimes still a little bit unstable because it uh, it uses pretty small wood chips. This is not good for this gasifier. It needs bigger. This is actually the small stuff, and it runs best on the bigger stuff. But hey, we only have low quality wood chips here because you know leaves, little twigs, small pieces. So it's not as stable as normal. But hey, the temperature at this kind of loads, because I've loaded it down to like four and a half kilowatts up by now. And it couldn't handle it because of, it couldn't, yeah, it sustained it. But the frequency was down to like 2600 RPMs at four and a half thousand watts. So I added this spring, so it will act like an extra pool put the throttle open so it it doesn't have to regulate as hard because the governor speed if the speed drops the force on this thing will increase and you need a certain amount of force to keep within a certain range of rpm so this is what i have to play with i probably make some some adjustable lever here like you have on um, almost all uh, generators which sets tension to the governor spring in the opposite direction so it will be tuned it the the, the window of regulation will be smaller in the end the engine doesn't respond too well to big load changes in load and that's because it doesn't have a zero pressure regulator that means that the high load the negative pressure on the gas fire side is higher than the air pressure so you need to adjust the valve to make up for the difference but i'm gonna make something that regulates itself so let's check it out 
So here I found a suitable thing to make the regulator out of. I draw two lines on both sides. I'm gonna cut it at the, this line and then I will grind the things in or hammer it flat so it will connect to each other with bolts and with glue and with the sheet in between to make the membrane uh, go up and down. Then I take this thing off, hollow it out and flip it around and, w and this is where the, the control pin will come out. Then we're gonna make um, a small valve on here so we have the it have it connected to the atmosphere but in a controlled way so the surge can be controlled with the valve like in this picture and then on the other end we make a pipe with a hose for the sensing of the atmospheric pressure so whenever that goes up the membrane will suck it in it will suck on it and it will be collapsing in and will open the gas valve and it will do that with this with this regulator equalizing it and the amount the amount of gas on both sides will oscillate a bit in reaction to the amount of load which is asked and then we could make this bolt on a spring and then we can turn the bolt in and up and down to control the springs. So let's cut it up and see how it looks inside. And we're back in the shed. This is the parts of the zero pressure regulator. This is not a pressure regulator, but a flow regulator. A lot of welding equipment have it as well. Like the one I have over here. The left side is the pressure, sorry, the right side is the pressure cage and inside the, behind it there is a pressure relief. So what this thing is, is the uh, uh, hinder ball, there's gonna be a valve on it, because that's gonna be uh, connected to atmospheric. And then it, this thing is gonna upside down like in the picture. And what happens is the gas will be pumped under pressure in this chamber. That will pressurize the membrane in between here. There's going to be a small membrane here. And a bigger membrane all over this edge. What that does is... As long as this membrane is bigger, quite a bit bigger as the hole, because it's gonna live like this. And this plunger in between the ladder will be connected to the big membrane, then the smaller membrane. And then there is this rubber stopper, if you will, and that will hold this hole tight. So if it hangs, if there's no pressure at all, it will hang on the gravity. And then whenever there is a gas pressure or suction on this side, it will be raised quite quickly because the force is big because the area is big and that will raise this plunger up until the, f the, the pressure differential goes away again and then it will leave again it will hover like this <laughs> inside so it goes to this chamber to that chamber to this pipe and, and out and there should be a cap here's the pit for it with bolts and uh, seal that off of course, weld everything together and see what it does. So most of it is welded together. You can see there's this hole inside which the rubber plunger will 
close. This corresponds with the first membrane, and then the second membrane is going to be inside here. Paint it now, bolt it all together, and see how it looks. So this is it, the regulator, it has this hose, it's attached to the more or less sealed version, there's a slight little leak, but that's probably because uh, it leaks in between the, the leather and the plastic, but it's just a little bit. As you can see here, by gravity the plunger will go down and the path is open. But if you turn it around, it will work the other way. But I'm just doing this for now because I have to blow in this pipe. If I suck on it, I'm sucking all this, uh, how do you call that stuff? Nasty shit in my lungs from the sealant which I used. So now you... It works with very little pressure and it... I just using my tongue as a piston. It's a diaphragm I used the uh, garbage bag plastic. Seems to work pretty good. First diaphragm too, garbage, plastic, not sure if we can see inside, hmm, I see something, and there's also a spring in this thing with bolt so I can give it a little tension Ooh, because when it's upside down the gravity will uh, pull it down and we can equalize it equalize the weight of the plungers with spring tension and if not I'm gonna add another spring and off we go maybe a smaller one I have some other bigger ones but this is it I'm gonna seal it up and then uh, in the next video I'm gonna check it out on the Chinese diesel engine that's been converted to wood gas too. Thank you for watching, like, share and subscribe and I hope that you enjoyed this video. See you next time.